Hey there, I'm Trevor Houston, the creator of the Who You Know Summit, and I'd like to welcome you to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. On our program, we'd like to show you a job search like you've never seen. Everything from getting noticed by employers, how to properly format your resume, and how to network effectively using LinkedIn to drive recruiters to your profile. We even take suggestions from our amazing community. So if you want to learn all things job search, go ahead and subscribe now. Focus. It's all about the job search. So if you want to learn how to land that next success, you heard them. All you got to do is subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome back to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. That's where you are. What you know is important, but But who who you know? know. Who you know? Who you know? Who you know? Well, I know somebody. Craig Bohall, I'm calling you after the show, but let, let me let me do a real quick formal introduction with with this man on the screen we got here. So let me let me introduce you to Terry Warnock. Now, am I saying your last name right, Terry? Yeah, that's close enough. Yeah. yeah cl- wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, yeah, on, you on. need to say it, Terry. Don't be nice. Tell me I'm saying it wrong. Am I say- <laughs> say it again. Warnock. Warnock. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we got Terry Warnock. And Terry is a passion is passionate about helping individuals change their lives and fulfill their true career potential. Terry is currently the executive director of campus operations at Tech Elevator, Ooh, a demand-driven in-person educational platform designed to support the rapid acquisition of technology <laughs> skills that can lead to meaningful careers and promotions in the tech-related fields. Everybody, please, wow, round of a, how do you say yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Warm round of applause. Warm round of applause Raise for Terry, Terry Warnock. Raise the roof for Terry, Terry Warnock. Thanks for joining I us, man. I got tongue twisted. Raise it up, y'all. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. All the time. <laughs> wow. Hey, wow. Terry, um, we always like to play this game before we dive into what you do and Tech Elevator and all this fun stuff, okay? I want to play a quick game with you, all right? It's called Would You Rather. Oh. Okay, so here we go. Would you rather, an audience, I also want to hear from you. Would you rather wake up in the middle of an unknown desert or in a rowboat on an unknown body of water? Mm, that's easy. So you got a choice. You got to wake up in the desert okay, or, or on a boat somewhere in the middle of the ocean. What, uh, so what you going to do? I'm going to say a boat. Uh I'm not a big fan of deserts, so I think I'd enjoy the uh, the kind of scenery of the ocean if I'm going to be out by myself. So I'd say a boat on the ocean, mm. uh, maybe a chance to catch some fish. I know nothing about catching anything in the desert, so I'd definitely say a boat. <laughs> no okay. scorpions. Huh? Okay, great answer. I like that. What about yeah. you, uh, Mark? All right, so I'm going to go desert because me wow. and open water, like if I can't see what's down there, and look, I'm a good swimmer, but I do, I would not want that. I, Plus, you know, I can. I'm kind of a closet prepper, so I think I might be able to, you know, make my own way. Foster, you what think about of you? A lame dad joke for that one? No. Just think about it I'll while think I'm asking. about it. For me, guys, it's going to have to be because I wanted to go to college to be marine biologist. Mm, okay. So it's going to be that boat because at least I get an opportunity to be eaten by a megalodon. Wow. Okay. So it's a <laughs> rowboat. Okay. It's a rowboat. I'm rowing, a yeah. rowboat. Okay. It's a rowboat. I'm going with boat too. I'm I'm going with boat because yeah. at least I, boat, in okay. the desert you walk and you just. Uh, yeah. No water. I don't know. They're no both board. both of those do not sound pleasant no. at no. all. No. Audience, you tell us rowboat or desert. What do you think? What y'all think? Let's look. All right. So now let's dive in. Mac Mediterranean said a boat. <laughs> Mac. <laughs> all right, Terry. Uh, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, Tech Elevator's launch in Dallas. I want to talk about that. Tell us a little bit about when that's coming. Oh, yeah. Because I'm excited. Can't wait for you to be here. And, uh, and there's some deadlines and all kinds of things you guys got going on. Tell us about that. Yeah, we officially got approved a couple months ago to operate in the state of Texas. So we are currently enrolling Dallas residents. Uh, the class starts June 28th. Uh, and then COVID uh, aside, we're planning on being physically in Dallas in September. So this first cohort will be remote, and then we'll be in person and embedded in the community in September. Nice. 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 Well, when you're here, like here, here, like I want you here, here. You know what I mean? Like not on the TV, TV, but like here, here, you know what I'm yeah, talking about? Gonna, live in person. Yeah. Like live Where we in person. Where we can fist bump and whatnot. Um, are there, I know you, you had mentioned there's a position in Dallas that you're seeking right now. Uh, tell us about that. What are you looking to, you're hiring. We are hiring. We'll have a full team, but this first role is our market leader, essentially 
the person that lays the groundwork for the, the campus itself, somebody super entrepreneurial, gets okay. to handpick their staff, um, somebody that's really passionate about changing people's lives and technology hmm. and is super embedded and loves the network. So hmm. I'm sure people watching the show today could fit that bill. Yeah. Ooh, okay, hold on. I'm going to get mic drop for that. Yeah, I'm going to do a mic drop on that too because yeah. there's some candidates watching right now. Yeah, think yeah, about that for a second. Yeah, we got a number of candidates watching right now. Well, tell us what is, okay, uh, you know, Tech Elevator, right? Your your coding uh, educational platform, right? Tell us a little bit. Is 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 tech talent growing? Is it a high demand industry? Like I, I kind of think it would be, but I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. So right now it's growing five times the rate of any other skill set in America. So oh. I would say yes. Mm. That's an easy answer. Oh, five uh, times. Mm. That's a five mm. times. I like <laughs> <No>. that. <laughs> I'm an IT recruiter. Think so. about it, the reason I'm even able to talk to you right now is because of software developers. Um, You're so right. I think COVID's actually even accelerated that pace. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's decelerated other industries. So you yes, think about hospitality, yes. restaurant industry, which obviously has been hit hard. Um, so I think if anything, COVID's actually shown a light on the tech industry, gaining even more steam as a career path. Tell us a little bit about the program itself. Like you said, the first cohort is going to be virtual. Like what's involved with, with that cohort then? It is intense. Uh, so the first requirement is you got to give me 50, 60, 70 hours of your time every week for 14 weeks. So oh. not a small commitment. Um, but again, if we're taking you from somewhere at the novice level to junior software developer in 14 weeks, we need that commitment from yeah, somebody. You do. Uh, so it's really important. Um, whether it's remote or in person, we have people that have at least 10 years of experience as your instructor. Uh, if you think about it, if you're climbing up the side of a mountain, you need a really good Sherpa. So you need a good guide, someone who's not just reading out of a textbook, who's been there, yeah. done that. Um, so you'll have that trail guide that's got experience. Um, and then our pathway program, which we can talk about a little bit later, uh, which is 100% focused on getting a job. I don't think we've ever had a student come to our program just looking to learn how to code. They're all looking to get into the tech industry. So right. the pathway program and the career part is really important to us, aside from just learning the coding skills. Terry, as a technical recruiter, I'm really, really glad to hear that it's that intense. It needs to be. It will weed out people, like you said, that are not serious about making that their, their focus in their career. And the people that finish that up, especially at the top of their class, we have had programs in Dallas that I've been accustomed, accustomed to supporting, uh, and they work absolutely wonderfully. Some companies will use you guys to, to create the type of employees that they need technically. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was going to say. So yeah. I, if I'm not mistaken, Terry, right, they go through the program. It's like a, it's like a boot camp, 12 weeks, right? You said 12 weeks? 14 weeks. 14, 14, 14, 14 weeks, my, weeks, my bad. Uh -huh. So 14 weeks, you're grinding it out, you're getting the knowledge, you're getting the skills, and then you've got, like, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, some partnerships with some different employers and things like that, and, and talk to us about how that process works. Yeah, so this is who you know. They pick us because of who we know. Um, uh -huh. We do not fit this uh -huh. educational bubble where we're here to teach you to code. We're hand-to-hand -hand combat, building the relationships with employers on behalf of the students, which... When you're looking at any school, you need to talk to the school about what they're doing on your behalf because mm -hmm. it's good to have somebody in your corner networking for you as well. Um, so they go through 30 different sessions that have nothing to do with coding skills and everything to do with networking and job skills. If you were a former chef and you're becoming a software developer, how do you even bring that up at a networking <laughs> event? How do you talk about that on your resume? All of those things are important. And then we bring employers in. So they do panel discussions, uh, mock interviews, showcases to talk about their company, and then a matchmaking event at the very end where we bring employers to our students. Um, it's a little unique. The employer does not see the resume until they meet the student that day. Wow. So remove some of that bias. Of, huh. They've never been a software developer. Um, I'm out of my... <laughs> Foster, oh, there you go, Foster. <laughs> I got a mic. I like that. Well, you said novice. You mentioned novice at, at the beginning when you were talking about the program. And so um, are there any prerequisites, any background in particular? I mean, is, can you tell us if there's anything that you have to have to join the program? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so there's no educational background. You need to be older than 18. We've actually implemented an aptitude test over the last four years. Good. Worked with an industrial psychologist, and we literally mapped every single question back to the performance in our class to get to our aptitude test. We just got it certified to be bias free, but mainly it's looking for problem solving, logic, pattern recognition, just to make sure you've got the cognitive horsepower. Um, and then we interview you for 90 minutes on top of that. Um, if you've told me you've never seen a line of code, I'm going to tell you, don't give me a dime of your money till you know you love it. Um, but other than that, we don't expect people to have software development in their background before our program, just an interest, a love for it. And then the cognitive horsepower to get through our program. Mm. Yeah, I don't know nothing about no coding. I'm, yeah, gonna be, yeah. I'm just going to no, tell I, you that right now. I, I, Look, I, can, I, can, I can affirm that. Yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> but that's the cool thing about I, it. I, I thank goodness it's not for me because it's for somebody else, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and maybe it's for somebody in this audience, right? Um, tell us about your the way that you, you do your reporting because I know that's a big differentiator as well. Um, there's a lot of places out there that, that throw out these numbers, like we get X amount of our folks landed or whatever. Like, t talk to us about that process. How does that work? Yeah, so we're part of an organization called the Council on Integrity Results and Reporting, CIRR.org, okay. meaning everything I throw at you, you can see black and white. So it's a, it's a nonprofit. Um, they use a law firm that audits all of our results, and it's really black and white. Did someone get a job? If they did, do we have their offer letter that says what was the role? What was the starting salary? Is it full-time? Is it part-time? And when do they start? Uh, you can see all those results on the website. There is no like, ah, uh, we kind of stopped working with them on the job search, so we're not going to count them. Um, and this is all in field. So if somebody went back to their old job, we don't get to count that. Uh, we put it out there, uh, completely transparent. Um, we get self-audited for all of that. It's really important to us. Unfortunately, I wish there were more schools and, and boot camps and just really in general higher ed that participate in the net. Because if, if you're looking to make a meaningful career switch, you need to have black and white facts about what your chances are on the back end of that. So really important to us. Um, would love to see more in the industry join it. There's probably 20-ish boot camps that are a part of that now, but it's super important as a consumer that you know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is important. No, the... I forgot to add. So that puts us at 95% graduation rate and a 92% uh, job placement rate as part of that. So that is Dang. leading the industry yeah. right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. 95% yeah. graduation, 92% land placement. Yeah, placement. Andy. Oh, man. Dang. So I had probably the same question good. that's burning in a lot of people's minds. Um, Cost, funding, like, and I think, so, you know, there are coding boot camps out there that you, you have this 12, 14 week, whatever it is. Um, how do people get through that, right? If they're, if they're having to support families and things like that. So are there any, you know, funding opportunities uh, for people to take advantage? Yeah, definitely. So our traditional lenders, uh, we actually partner with Sally May probably oh. pretty familiar with them with traditional higher ed. They ran a pilot with us two years ago because of our job placement outcomes. So we're one of the few boot camps that work with Sally May. Uh, we have other partners like them, Skills Fund. Uh, we just introduced actually within the last 30 days an income share agreement for students that might not have the typical credit score for traditional lending. Um, so they can kind of pause that and not have to pay back till they get a job. We have GI benefits, we're approved for WEO and kind of local workforce funding. Um, so there's a variety of things. We also just launched a million dollar initiative around our Represent Tech Scholarship, um, giving away uh, free rides to people from underrepresented communities in tech. So that's a lot, but there's a lot of different ways to pay. Um, and a lot of those programs, you can also take out cost of living. The great part is, as you can hear, we analyze all of our numbers so the average outgoing salary is $24,000 higher than incoming. Uh, so the cost of our program is fifteen five. dollars You can see the return uh -huh. on investment you pay off your loan from your new job within a year, which we're really, really proud of. Well, I like that. Okay, so hold on. Because um, we like to talk about cash flow. We were talking about that <laughs> earlier, right? Put the <laughs> yeah. cash flow back out there in the communities. Well, <clears throat> on average, okay, so let's say, um, are most of the people coming through, are they, are they getting... Um, entry level uh, coding opportunities or do you see more uh, mid-level, senior level? What do you see coming through your program? 
Yeah, it's definitely you're getting your foot in the door, so it's going to be a junior level developer role, kind okay. of developer one, whatever the company calls it. If sure. you come with like project management or analyst experience, you might be able to go into a, a technical consulting role that's above that, but most of them are coming in at an entry level developer role. What kind of ballpark cash flow does that look like on an annual salary for a yeah, like say a junior usually level? In the in the sixty ish K range yeah, okay. uh, coming out of a program. That, that's, Again, what I, that's, um, that's what I thought you'd say, yeah. Yeah. So so okay. So you go, you put in your twelve uh, 14 weeks, excuse me. Fourteen weeks. Bam, you come out, they start moving and shaking, putting the things together. It's all about who you know. They start making things happen. 92% placement, mm-hmm. 60K, woo, let's go, hey, cash look. flow. Hey, look, there's a lot of people that spend four years at higher education Heck yeah. that are just graduating trying to get that, right? Right. Spend yeah. 14 weeks doing that? A lot guys, of people. Guys, check this yeah. out. For some of you guys that are listening that are about to get out of college, 60K salary, can you live on that? Yeah. And you're starting a career, you're getting that experience, and different applications in corporate America, then Foster and other IT recruiters start smiling. What about somebody, Terry, real quick, what about somebody who maybe isn't just coming out of college, who maybe is a little older, and they're like, you know what? I'm gonna gonna do this. Let's, Mm -hmm. this is something that it's in demand. It, right? It's it's five times, you said earlier, you said it's five times uh, in demand as other industries. Like, it's growing extremely fast. Yeah, yep. you know what? I want to do this. Or or they're adding, right? Maybe they have some experience, IT experience, and they're Let's adding. Let's say I don't code. have any. Yeah. Let's say I wanted to. Okay, I'm like, yeah, let's just say you're a Mark wanted to. You ain't got no coding experience, but you're like, I want to do this. What's the real, is it, is that realistic? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> The average age of our students is actually 31, so it's not okay. the 22 year old college grad. So these okay. are definitely career changers. And it's truthfully why employers love hiring from our program because you have seven to eight years on average experience before coming to our program. So you have professionalism, you know how to stand up and interact in meetings, you know how to write great emails. Uh, that's tough to teach a 22 year old CS grad. So, yes, you'd be the perfect person uh, for our program. Um, I think we've had somebody as old as 70 come through our program and successfully. Oh, oh, wow. oh wow. snap. Wow. <laughs> 70. Awesome. Guys, look, I'm just saying, y'all need to go check them out. Look, because look, even if you're doing a career change, it's a complete transition. It's not what you did. Maybe you were an accountant and you're like, I don't want to be an accountant no more. <laughs> I'm tired of counting beans. That's, yeah. Now I want to do some coding. I don't know. I'm just mm-hmm. I'm throwing it out there. Maybe you mm-hmm. do. You go check them out. You say, okay, this this makes sense. It's an in demand field. Like you want to go where the jobs are, okay? And after COVID and, and this pandemic and all that, look, this is an in demand. It's not going anywhere. Yep. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. This is an in demand industry. So I love it. Love it. Love it. And got, Dallas and Atlanta are are, are epicenters. Oh, yes. I, I got a real quick technology. question. Like I, I had mentioned somebody that's wanting to add, right, to their experience or expertise. Like, let's say you do have an IT professional and they do have some maybe some coding experience or uh-huh. older languages, right? Um, are you having people come through the program that are adding to, you know, Python, Java, some new skill sets? Definitely. About 5% of our students already have a CS degree or developer experience. So if they were a, a COBOL developer and they're looking to add Java uh, to their oh, experience, yeah. definitely do that quite a bit. That's awesome. All right, we have had like 32 mic drop moments up in here. <laughs> so <laughs> what we're going to do, what we're gonna do now is we're going to go to the audience, okay? And we're going to ask you a question, okay? I got the question, actually. I got it. I got it. You got it? I got it. I got it. I got it. So, audience, I want to hear from you. Oh, thanks. Okay, and this is for a tech elevator uh, swag bag. We're going to get you some goodies, okay? Um, I want to know, what's that placement rate? What is the placement rate? Good question. After you go through their program, 14 week boot camp, right? And you give them a little piece of piece of your life, and you come back out on the end, get you a little 60K minimum, and then you grow from there. Keep it growing, cash flow. What's that? What's that percentage? Tell me in the comments. While we're waiting on that, because there's a little lag on that. Um oh, oh, nope, there it is. Rose count. There it is. <laughs> Actually, it's so funny. Meg Rose was first. Meg Rose. So shout out to you, Meg Rose. 
You know what? You want to give it to Meg Rose? Let's give it to Meg Rose. Yeah. Let's give it to Meg Rose. Yeah. yeah, let's give it to Meg Rose. Meg Rose, our hype lady, came in with the quickness. Anyway. 92%. Quick with the quickness. Quick with the quickness. That's the correct answer. Am I right? Yep. 92. Congrats, Meg Rose. Congrats, Meg Rose. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> family win. Yes, family win. She was quick with the fingers, y'all. I'm just saying, 92%. All right. Guys, we got to go to a real quick break. Terry, I appreciate you coming yeah, on. Terry, this Thank is good, you brother. so much. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thanks, and we're Terry. excited you're coming to Dallas, like like planting the flag, like just putting it in the ground and like shaking things up. So we're excited to see you here. Um, thank oh, you so much. Meg Rose said give it to somebody else. So oh, that she was, said give it to somebody else? That would be Cat O'Toole. Would that be Cat O'Toole, O'Toole is next. Yeah. Congrats, Cat. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, guys, we got to go to a quick break. Meg Don't Rose, go anywhere because when we come back, we got John Palmer in the house. Trevor Houston here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. We hope you've been inspired, encouraged, educated, and entertained all at the same time. For information on our different events, workshops, partners, or partnership opportunities available, check out whoyouknow.show for more details. And be on the lookout for our new mobile app coming soon. You never know how this show can help someone you know. You know, and if we've made an impact or put a smile on your face today, don't forget to hit that share button on your way out. Until next week, it's all about who you know. Bye.